it's time to start integrating form fields in arbitrary dimensions as well. Let's think about how that might work. It's probably a good idea at this point to go back and remember how we have integrated one form fields. Remember that back in chapter three or two form fields. Do you remember that back from chapter nine? How do we generalize what we did there to arbitrary k-form fields in higher dimensional spaces? Well, let's think. Let's think about what happened when we integrated one forms. We integrated one form fields over one dimensional curves in space. Why? Because one forms eat one tangent vector. Two forms, on the other hand, eat two tangent vectors. And so we integrated two form fields over oriented surfaces in space. So now, what do we do with a k-form field? Well, a k-form needs to eat k vectors. So what's the analog? What is a, an oriented k-dimensional thing in space? Well, it's bonus time. That's what it is. These higher dimensional surfaces are things that are called differentiable manifolds. Now there's a lot of theory behind manifolds that simply does not fit into the context of this course. However, we can do a simplified version. If you think of a k-dimensional manifold as something like a k-dimensional surface sitting inside of Rn for some value of n bigger than k, something that locally looks like k-dimensional space, that's a good place to start. We're going to keep things really simple by working with parametrized domains. We're going to think about working with functions from some region in Rk into Rn. Let's assume we have some region, capital R, inside of Rk, and some function that takes that region into Rn. Let's call that function G. And the image of that is some k-dimensional surface. Let's call that S. Now, this parameterization has to be sufficiently nice. Uh, we're not going to get into the details. We're going to think in terms of this mapping, G, taking a point T in the domain to G of T in the image on this k-dimensional surface. Now, the derivative of this is going to be significant because it's going to take the basis vectors in the domain E1 up through EK to k tangent vectors at that point, g of t in s. And that's going to be really nice because that's automatically going to assign an orientation to this k-dimensional manifold s. So let's say that we're given a k-form field, omega, on s, and we want to integrate it. Well, that k-form field wants to eat k vectors, of course. Of course, let's feed it the k columns of the derivative of the parameterization dg. And then the integral of omega over s is going to be the same frightening looking formula that it has always been. What is this thing going to be? Well, let's think. First of all, we evaluate that k-form field omega at the output g of t, we feed that k form, the k columns of the derivative dg, evaluated at the input t, and then we integrate this over the k parameters dt1, dt2, all the way up through dtk. We integrate that over the region. Now, the nice thing is, is that the change of variables formula, as always, tells us that this integral really only depends on the surface, on the manifold, and how it's oriented. The specifics of the parameterization don't matter at all. Now, I get it. This formula, oh, it looks weird. This terminology, oh, what's a manifold? Also weird. But look, this is the same formula we had when we were integrating two form fields. And instead of a nice two-dimensional surface, well, now we have a few more parameters to work with. It might be a good idea. Go back, look at what we did when we integrated two forms. Think about how that generalizes in this setting, and then move on. Let's take a look at some examples.